again and welcome to my video on radial basis function networks hopefully by watching my tutorials on the perceptron on the multilayer perceptron and on the general uh, uh, video on your networks now you have developed a reasonable understanding of how your networks uh, work in general in this video as we mentioned we're going to learn about the RBF or the radial basis function networks now they these networks contain of uh, or sorry, consist of uh, three layers, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. We've seen this before. It, use, it usually used and actually derived from the theory of function approximation. So the output will be, in general, a real value, which means uh, if we want to use it for uh, classification, then we may be able to output um, class probabilities. And... Um, <coughs> For in the input layer now, every neuron or every unit here uh, uh, corresponds to one uh, uh, predictive variable in our data. Each neuron in the hidden layer consists of a radial basis function, for example a Gaussian function. So in the hidden layer here, the transfer function is the Gaussian, as we mentioned before, we spoke about the transfer functions before. And that function is centered on a point with the same dimensions as the predicted variables, which means if we have let's say 10 predictive variables 10 if we have 10 predictive variables if we have 10 features then uh, each Gaussian function there will be centered on a point which is 10 dimensional it, it will have 10, 10 uh, components you know x1 x2 x3 x4 until x10 the output layer however is a weighted sum of the outputs from these hidden layers so the output layer is just a weighted sum of the outputs of these of this hidden layer and here, as we mentioned, the neurons here or the units here have Gaussian transfer function functions. Now, the way it works is very similar to the k nearest neighbor. I've explained this in my uh, uh, in one of my videos. In fact, I've I've even provided some Java implementation to make th make sure things are clear. So we have here an example of two classes, uh, two-dimensional data, and two classes, red and blue. And we have a new point, green. We want to classify it so we can choose let's say five nearest neighbors around it and then use majority vote to classify that new point so the basic idea is that a predicted target value of an item is likely to be about the same as other items that have close values of the predicted variables so it will have close values of predicted variables or features um, now more information about how the RPF networks work uh, what it does, it positions one or more RBF neurons. RBF neurons are neurons with uh, RBF transfer function, for example, with a Gaussian transfer, fu transfer function. It places one or more RBF neurons in the space described by the predictive variables. For example, if we have two variables, then we place one or more neurons there. If we have three variables, four variables, n dimensional data, we have, we place several uh, RBF neurons there. Now, this space will have as many dimensions as there are predictive variables so if we have 10 features or 10 predictive variables that means the space will be 10 dimensional what we do is we use Euclidean distance to compute the distance between a query point a new point for example the green circle here to the center of each neuron so we need to know the center of each neuron as you can see there the center of each neuron and a radial basis function also called the kernel function is applied to that distance for example to compute the weight or the influence for each neuron I'll show you what I, I show a detailed uh, picture of what an RBF network looks like now the radial basis function is so named because the radius distance is the argument to the function that's why it's named as radial because the radius distance is input to the function the further a neuron is from a point being evaluated the less influence it has so if a neuron is too far from that point then it will have less influence this information is from this website now let's have a look at, at the detailed structure of an RBF network we have an input layer these correspond to our input variables and then in the hidden layer we have one or more neurons as we mentioned before each of them will have a radial basis function as its transfer function for example the Gaussian function that we mentioned before and then 
those will have will be the output of those functions now will become inputs to our output layer weighted inputs to our output layer now the output now is the weighted sum of the inputs here the inputs are the outputs of these neurons from the hidden layer and each of them now for the hidden layer the um, transfer function is the Gaussian and you notice now the Gaussian function now it has two parameters the center and the radius and for each neuron remember this for each neuron in the hidden layer we need to find those distances and find the corresponding weight so we can compute the weighted sum in the output layer so remember that for each neuron we need to we need to find these two variables the center and the radius now the algorithm is as follows because our transfer function now is the Gaussian activation function with the parameters R for the radius or the standard deviation that's also known as the spread usually and C the center or the average taken from the input space um, defined separately at each RPF unit so those parameters for the function are defined at each RBF unit separately as we mentioned for each of these separately the learning process is based on adjusting the parameters of the network to reproduce a set of input output patterns and we need to find in general three parameters the weights for each of these hidden nodes and for each of them we need to find the center C and the unit with with R so the R as we mentioned before is usually known as the radius or as the spread now for the center we can find we can use a clustering algorithm to use that maybe k means clustering i will have a video on explaining how this actually works in 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 my, in my youtube channel you can find it but in general uh, the way it works is as follows uh, a set of clusters each with r dimensional centers is determined by the number of input variables or nodes in the of the input layer the cluster centers become the centers of the RB, RBF units so we that's we that's how we find the centers for each RBF unit the number of clusters is a design parameter so it depends on our design it, de it actually determines the number of nodes in the hidden layer now the k means uh, clustering algorithm works as follows we initialize the center of each cluster to a different randomly selected training pattern so we randomly uh, choose k uh, points to be our, our centers for the clusters after that we assign each training pattern to the nearest cluster this can be accomplished by maybe calculating the leading distance between the training patterns and the cluster centers you know the ones we chose randomly when the training patterns are assigned we calculate the average position for each cluster center that average position now becomes the new cluster center and we repeat steps 2 and 3 until the cluster centers will not change any further so we repeat those, these two steps until no change happens in our cluster centers well, as I said I'll have a video on that in the future now finding the unit width the radius or aka stands for also known as the spread we can find it using the k nearest neighbors algorithm I have a video on this and I also have a Java implementation on this um, although there I use majority vote but if you're trying to find a real value then you can use uh, uh, the average but when the RBF centers have been established the width of each RBF unit can be calculated using the k nearest neighbor again the width or the radius or the spread are the same thing you can find that in the literature a number k is chosen for the neighbors for each center the k nearest centers are found the root mean squared distance between the current cluster center and its k nearest neighbors is calculated and this is the value chosen for it with r so for example if we if the current cluster center is cj then the radius value for that center is rj equals the square root of the sum of squared differences between um, uh, cj and ci where i equals I ranges from 1 to k so the k nearest neighbors we square that complete the sum and then divide by k and then take the square root that will be the value of the r again just to repeat that I do have a video on the k nearest neighbor algorithm after that uh, uh, we can find the weight so for each node in the hidden layer we have obtained the parameters r and c the spread and the center now we compute the Euclidean distance from the 
point being evaluated to the center C of each neuron and then we apply the radial basis function also called as the kernel function also known as the kernel function kernel function to the distance to compute the weight or the influence of each neuron remember that we don't have any weights now between the input layer and the hidden layer but we have weights between the hidden layer neurons in the hidden layer and the output layer so these are the ones that we need to uh, compute now just quickly we have we can uh, the, you know there are several algorithm algorithms but I'll just mention three of them here the first one is to randomly choose the centers from the training set and we can compute the spread or the radius for the IBF function using the normalization method and then we can find the weights using uh, a method called pseudo inverse method the second way can be uh, we can use the clustering for finding the centers we can use normalization to find the spreads or the radius and then we can use least mean squares algorithm to find the weights and this is known as the hybrid learning learning process the third way can be uh, by applying the gradient 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 descent method for finding the centers uh, the spread and the weights and that happens by minimizing the squared error I hope uh, this can give us an overview of how the RBF network works thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time